five way valve angle it's 135 that means it is actually heating up the battery or trying to yeah there was an update yesterday to it Twenty twenty forty four fifteen. But there's nothing new, it just bug fixes the same lock as the last time. All right, let's go for a drive. Just quick customer appointment, and I thought. I'll set everything up so we can have an so we can have a nice drive in the test lander. 33 degrees outside. But in here we've got nice 24. Yeah, see the 12 volt battery there, 14.1. It's getting an equalization charge now. Uh, need to go this way. And then after a while it goes back to 13.7, which is the floating voltage for the 12 volt battery. Yeah, welcome back to another video here on Unplugged TV. I'm not going to test anything today. I just thought I turn on the camera while we are driving here. driven since yesterday 5 30 6 o'clock in the p.m. and the battery is still at 30 degrees now so it hasn't cooled down overnight much and the five-way valve angle <laughs> what a word is at 135 degrees so that means it lets hot water from the electric motor into the battery to heat it up. And you can see the inlet is actually warmer than the battery 30.9 to 30.3. So it's still trying to heat up the battery. But this will change fairly soon because um, yeah, 30 degrees is usually the threshold when the valve goes down to 95 and then eventually goes down to 5 degrees so it turns the valve at a different angle and then doesn't let hot water anymore inside the battery and then it, it circulates the water inside the battery only to the cooler at the front grill and inside the battery and that's it but there's no active cooling or something there's no air condition happening or something nothing just circulating to keep all the cells in the same temperature that's all and as always I have charged to a 60% state of charge and you can see it there why is there a white there 50% did I say 60? 50. I meant 50. The battery is on 50% state of charge. If it gets so hot outside, I usually charge only to 50%. And this gives me 188 kilometers of range, which is totally enough for me and my commute and these occasional trips here in this area for my customers. It's better for the battery if you keep it at a lower state of charge when the weather is hot. If it makes a difference, I don't know. Some people say no, because Elon Musk tweeted at one stage, you can charge to 90% every day. And this was including hot days or not excluding hot days. But the science about lithium batteries says if they are on a high state of charge in hot weather, they degrade a lot faster. These are the main components for high degradation. And my degradation 
um, calculation of the uh, Tesla Phi and the Scan My Tesla actually went down again from over 5% as I showed you in one of my last videos and it is now 2.93% or something, 3.2 it, it changes a little bit but the re uh, prediction has yeah, recalculated and the car predicts now even more range 376 I have seen when the car was new the 100% setting was 384 so we have roughly lost for eight kilometers of range in over one year and and 20,100 20,150 kilometers exactly I don't know and this is not a real degradation what we are seeing there on these apps this is just a calculated degradation but 3% sounds pretty uh, uh, realistic actually for one for the first year because the battery form formats and yeah, settles in so to speak so 3% should be fine as predicted it's still trying to warm up the battery see the motor is 37 and it takes some heat away and puts it in the battery to run it optimal. I would really like to have more control about this temperature in the battery. So I would like to have I would like to be able to turn off this preheating from the motors. See now it even pushes 40 degrees. Oh no that was just a misreading. <laughs> 32.3 still. really like to keep the battery as cool as possible especially here in Australia because I don't need a high performance battery in the car I'm not a race driver I don't need hard acceleration maximum power to the motors motor I've got only one And the same for the charging, as I mentioned many times before. I would like to turn this preheating while DC charging completely off. And they charge a little bit longer. It takes five minutes longer from 20 to 80 percent. I don't care, I've got time. I mean, realistically, when do you when do you use DC charging? This is only when you go on holiday on a longer trip or something, and then you drive couple of hours a day anyway so what are five minutes per charging stop and this is just advertising and promotion what Tesla does for their um, yeah for other electric vehicles basically saying look that's what we achieve we can charge faster we can charge in a shorter amount of time So instead of advertising, they have all these nice parameters and numbers and figures ready. Saying, look, that's what we achieve. Now you can see the uh, valve goes down now from 135 to usually 95 for a moment. And then it triples further down to, um, so where's this customer now? Yeah, it goes down to five degrees. This is the angle of the valve. So it stops heating up the battery now. Uh, okay, we're almost at the customer side. I'll turn off the cameras now and should be back in just a minute. As expected was a quick visit at the customer. I left the air condition running on 26 
while I was in there for the 10 minutes but the consumption has not increased it only measures the consumption here on the screen when you are driving when the car is in motion if you park somewhere and have the air condition running this does not count towards your consumption why the consumption is so low you know sometimes it shows me I've used four kilowatt hours during the day but then I recharge the car and I can charge with seven or even sometimes eight kilowatt hours for the next commute in the morning and as you know during my lunch break I sit in the car have the air conditioning running for at least half an hour sometimes morning tea afternoon tea and another 20 15 20 minutes or so with the aircon running pre-cooling when I get into the car all this does not count for the consumption figures on the dashboard here on the computer it is a bit silly right this should count against your trip That's how you keep the consumption low. <laughs> At least in your advertising. But only what you recharge into the car actually counts. This is what really counts. Now used 131 kilowatt hours, uh, watt hours per kilometer, and two kilowatt hours being used. Here yeah, the valve is still at 95 degrees. Battery is at 33. Thirty-three degrees is already when degradation starts. Actually, everything above twenty-five is almost too warm for the battery, and degradation starts already. We had a huge discussion on the WhatsApp Tesla group here in Queensland recently about how far should you charge your car. And because I'm always running relatively low, so 50, 60, 70 percent only, most people run their cars at 80, 90 percent, even 95 percent sometimes. They all have still range anxiety because nobody can tell me that they really need this range every day. You don't need 400 and 400 plus kilometers with your car every day. There's only very, very few people who need that. So I don't see the point why you should recharge your car to 80% every day if you don't need it. And even now with 166 kilometers I can easily drive to Brisbane if I need to and charge over there a little bit and then come back home. I could potentially even make it from here to Brisbane and back home with one without charging in between. Some, some people say, well, I don't, I don't keep the car for that long that I should really worry about degradation. Well, you sell the car to other people then. It goes into the second-hand EV car market, you know. And you should not bust your car knowing you could have preserved more battery capacity by charging to a lower state of charge during hot weather, for example, or in general. I don't think it's really a bad perception to say I don't care because I don't drive the car that long. And I just charge to 90% every day, so whatever. So I'll try to really look after my battery as much as possible after the experience with the previous car. 
And even if I sell the car after five years or four or five years or even after three years, the next person who gets the car has a perfectly conditioned battery. Well looked after, not much degradation. What's going on here? This is... Very popular road here. I'm still on 131 watt hours per kilometer. Oh, I think you cannot see that. There's two kilowatt hours used and 131 watt hours per kilometer so far. So it's a bit higher, 130 now. It's a bit higher, but this is because we are having to use the air condition during the whole time. But parking does not count when you have the aircon running. these rubber thingies underneath the car now for uh, lifting the car up these how are they called lift jacks check lifts no lift jacks lift jacks they they pop into a little hole underneath the car and then you can check up the car on these four points and um, I've ordered them online of course somewhere in was it an AliExpress or something? It was like $18 for a pack of four, including a bag. I said, well, yeah, that, that'll do. I probably need them every, I don't know, 30,000 kilometers or something to retain the tires, and that's it. So I don't want to spend like $60, $70 on these ones. And These are the cheapest ones I could find. And they will be traveling in the little compartment in the, the boot all the time. Yeah, I probably need to re uh, rotate my tires when they arrive. I've got now 20, yeah, 21,500 on the clock. And most people say you should rotate your tires after 10,000. I didn't. My tires look like new. I just do it for peace of mind after 20,000 now. And that's it. Gate closing, yeah. All right. Nice little drive. Just a few minutes to the customer. And restarted his laptop and everything worked. He pressed the power button, but the power button put the laptop to sleep. It didn't restart. He didn't know that. Okay, consumption went down to 129 watt hours now, and it still shows me two kilowatt hours used for this trip. Uh, 30, uh, 19.3 kilometers all in total to the customer and back. All right, peeps, that's it. That's the video for today. I thought I'd take you with me and share the scan my Tesla Tesla let's have a quick look at the degradation what the car shows yeah the car shows me 3.44% uh, oh. <laughs> slipped in there um, let's have a look here at all I think it's in all in all in all yeah so, um, AC charge total 2647 and DC charge total 1094. This includes supercharging and uh, 50 kilowatt DC charging. So, um, reach and total almost 700 kilowatt hours. That's insane, right? And I've used so far 2000. 
why is this happening? 2,908 for driving, kilowatt hours for driving. Yeah, so there is it. Uh, full pack when new, 52.4. This has never changed, of course. And now we've got a nominal full pack of 50.6. And this was down to 48.9, 49 kilowatt hours. But now it has recalculated, recalibrated to 50.6. And you can see also the energy buffer is back to 2.3 kilowatt hours while this one was at 2.2 before and i don't know if they change these settings with updates as well i have never paid too much attention what actually changed in these settings after an update because there are so many parameters here the the at the app shows you if you want to i mean that's that's a hell of a lot of a of a task you know to keep track of all that but yeah, as I said, if it if it's at at about um, about 3.4 percent, this is just a calculated one. Tesla Phi shows me between 1 percent and 3 percent, so it will be around that amount, which is totally fine for 21,500 kilometers, right? So yeah, we are now down to 43 percent. See, and we have started with 50 percent. I'll keep the battery here on. On the minimum level of 50% state of charge so it charges overnight to this level and then I keep the battery there and even if I don't use the car or something during the day it sits here in the shade but as you have seen when we started the battery has already 30 degrees so it's already pretty hot and they're expecting a heat wave next week here with um, over 40 degrees 43 44 they are talking about which is insane and um, luckily I don't need to go to the office next week so the car will be sitting here in the carport nicely ventilated and I probably keep it plugged in to the solar system anyway here so in case the cooling wants to kick in or something but um, I'll probably check the temperatures with the Tesla scan my Tesla Tesla watchdog um, during this temperature and see what's going on but this will be interesting but I don't think the car will start the cooling actually I've never seen that. Even if the car heats up the battery to 55 degrees during supercharging or DC fast charging and you um, you start driving afterwards, it does not use any active cooling. It circulates the the fluid inside the battery pack to keep all batteries in the, on the same temperature level and then the temperature will slowly come down. But it's not like it, it's trying to cool down the battery at 55 degrees. That's not the case. Um, Never seen any cooling here but while charging at home, only at the supercharger so far and at the 350 kilowatt ultra, ultra super high, high P, I don't know, high power charger, whatever it's called, HPC, HPC, is it called? Yeah. So this was the three times I've seen cooling while charging. And apart from that, even while driving or parking or slow charging here, I've never seen any cooling, nothing. The pump is running. You can hear the pump running, but there's no cooling. Just again, it's to keep the battery on the same temperature level. All right, enough rambling for today. I hope you enjoy this little drive here through the desert, the hot Australian climate here. Uh, these days, not many people are showing the Tesla watchdog anymore. It's kind of out. A little bit you know outdated i don't know people are not interested in this anymore or something i don't know i've got this always running i've always have my my custom uh, view here so this is my custom view as you have seen just when we drove and this gives me all the information like cell temperatures um, fluid inlet motor temperature rear power of the motor max regen power if we have a power limit or well, we don't have a power lim limit anymore because it's so warm now uh, state of charge the average cell voltage here and up oh, so the, the uh, 12 volt battery has now uh, equalized to a 13.2 so it starts with 14.1 or something to equalize the uh, cells it's a lead acid battery and then it goes down to 13.2 as a uh, floating charge and we've got the valve here as well i was just interested that's why i have this figure in here uh what the valve actually does in terms of heating or cooling the battery pack 
but now it's now down to 5, 5.25 degrees. And I've seen only these three states, 135, then it goes down to 95, and then it goes down to 5, which is uh, heating is turned off. I don't know when the, when the cooling kicks in, what it says then. I have to, I have to watch this then. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support. This is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia signing off. Stay charged, stay safe, and we will see us again in the next video soon. See ya, bye-bye.